Now, two types of drip campaigns. One is the most simplest one, triggered by time. मतलब Monday, Wednesday, Friday, तीन दिन आप भेजो, right? You are just setting up the database. You are setting up these three emails, and you are saying that this day, this time, ग्यारह बजे Monday को, बारह बजे Tuesday, Wednesday को, and तीन बजे Friday को भेज दो. That's it. That's all you are doing in the first one, simplest one. The second one is a little more interesting, and I will take you through it. But first, we will go through the time interval, the simplest one. Now this is how our email calendar looks like, right? This is how your content calendar also is created. This is what we do. I will tell my boss. I will show one slide, and I will tell my boss that listen, we are going to be sending out emails on this, 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 this day, right? And then on the next slide, I will show those the designs of the email, and I'll keep. Now this Zomato, for example, does it, right? Zomato sends, you know, and they send it to every day. But they will send seven days a week. They will have seven emailers. Someone will sit and make those emailers. They will decide which day which emailer will go, and that is how they present it also to their boss, saying, "Ye saat emailer ya ye char emailer hai, ye hafta jayega." That is the simplest one. The second type of drip campaign is something which is bases your action. Now, when you go to a website, right, you make a decision to buy, add to cart, you purchase, you fill a lead, you are doing something, right? Basis, your action is where you get emails. So what happens is, imagine tomorrow iPhone 13 launch, and they did launch. So let's take iPhone 14. iPhone 14 launch. iPhone 14 will in their drip campaign list of five emails that they have created. Okay, now see this. Emailer one with launch of iPhone uh, 14. Emailer two which talks about why iPhone 14. Third will give you a 30 percent discount. Four will say why iPhone 14 is the best thing to purchase. Fifth will say 20 percent, 40 percent off only for today, right? And this is the campaign already set. Now, if you do not, if you have got this emailer, and if you do not click on any of the emailers, right, you will get all of those five emailers. When you don't click or you don't purchase, so even if you click and you don't purchase, you will still get all five emails. After five emailers, you get tagged as an inactive customer. But if between these emailers, after the third one, when you saw a thirty percent discount, you say, "Yeah, thirty percent discount. Your iPhone fourteen will be must." Hai. Let's go and buy. On the third, when you go and you click on it and you purchase the product, you will be excluded from future emails because you have already purchased the product, right? So in drip campaigns, this is customer action. They will continue getting the email or they will stop getting the email based on whether they have bought or not. Now this is one type. The second type of drip campaign is this: when you have registered for a service, right, you will get a welcome email. Then you will get an introduction email. You will it will tell you what can you expect out of this. You know frequency links etc. Then they'll come and tell you that now that you're doing this course, also you can do these courses, right? A promo promotion email. Then if you have purchased and this was Code Academy, right? These are emails I got by the way when I uh, you know registered for Code Academy. The fourth email that I got was an offer that you can upgrade now. You can actually get the Code Academy Pro. So these are now whether it's you who has done it, my mother who has done it, my sister who has done it, or me who has done it. All of us bases our registration to the service will get email one, two, three, four. Whether you click on one and don't click on other, whatever happens, you will still get four emails, and I'll get still get these four emails, right? So this is the registration itself. The emails come in. The other one and the most common one is your order confirmation, right? Your order is confirmed. Order has been shipped. Order is out for delivery. Order has been delivered. Then you get a feedback email, right? You got the product. Please tell us how it is. Rate us, etc. Give feedback. All of these are also a part of drip campaign. All of this is set in the background. What they do is, so after you can see the space, right? All of those spaces, खाली छोड़ा हुआ है. And those spaces is where what you do is you those guys fill in right. This is my customer database. The database goes in and it gets filled in. Now this the things that we discuss in or the things we decide in our drip campaign is why are we doing the drip campaign? Are we doing it because we want to make it easier for us to send the campaign? Are we doing a drip because customers are expecting? Now if you buy a product from Amazon, you are expecting an email which says. Orders confirmed. Orders shipped. Right. I still remember. You know, I bought this uh, mobile phone cover from Pop It Out, which kept showing me these ads on Instagram, and they were very cute covers. So when I bought, when I ordered from there, I didn't get anything. I didn't get an email, and I'm so used to Amazon and Flipkart and all that. 
I wrote to those guys, "Thank you. Where is my order confirmation?" And they are like, "But we have it confirmed at our end." But I said, "I want a confirmation, right?" Now, what happens is the reason drip emails also happen is because the customer is expecting a communication. So, is that your objective, or is it because you want to like you saw the Code Academy one? Is it because you want the customer to upgrade? Want the customer to upsell. So whatever the objective is, make sure the objective is defined. Why is this important? Is because at any given point of time, you will have multiple campaigns running. Now it's not like only one campaign is going on. So Amazon will have something to promote its product. It will have something for its Prime Day. It will have something for order shipment. It will have for different use cases, different email campaigns set up. So milaki, there may be twenty email campaigns you have to manage. If you do not have an objective for each one of this, it may overlap each other. Right now, objective is that who is the target audience? Like I said, the audience segments. On what basis are you segment? On what basis are you filtering people? What how frequently will you be sending? Like I said, bit max to max two to three times a week, right? Nothing more than three times a week. And once a communication goes, what is the other communication that has to go? So, like you saw here, right after the welcome, you have an introduction. Now, after introductory, you could have sent an offer to upgrade, right? Did you have to send a product promotion? But this is a call we have to take. Saying after which email will what email go, and does it make the sequencing logic? Does it have a logic of the entire why you are sending this after the other one? This is just an example, so I'm just not going to go through it because it's a case study. In case you all want to read it, but this is just about if you are to purchase a work desk from them. So you all can read this when I send you all the present. Now I'll give you an example of Netflix. Okay, how they do drip campaigns? Very simple. When you cancel a service through Netflix, I don't know if any of you all have cancelled, but even I'm not cancelled. I've got this from, uh, I mean, from Google itself. So when you cancel Netflix, right, you get three emails. One is you get a confirmation that you've cancelled, which is very obvious, right? And this, like I said, is literally customer action of cancellation triggers an email, which is the confirmation of cancellation email. So there is one action of the customer which is triggering the first email, right? Now after that, after I send the confirmation, what I do is after a week, I will send another email which says rejoin today. Right? You don't want to miss out, etc., etc. And you say rejoin today. Now the third one, right? Imagine I don't reply to the second one. The third one will just come back and give me all the different shows and say this is what you're missing. Right? These are the ones that have been recently added. And it will say if you want to watch these shows, you know, restart your membership. Now these are the three very clear things that Netflix has said. So what Netflix is doing, the drip campaign starts with, oh, you have cancelled your subscription. Let me send you this emailer. Post that the sequence of emailers is rejoined today, and this is what you're missing. Right? That's it. That's as simple as a drip campaign. It doesn't have to be very complicated. Any questions here, guys? Now, B2B and B2C, right? You will hear this many, many times. If you're in marketing, especially B2B and B2C are very common words that we use. Now, B2C is business to consumer. Now, what's business to consumer? When a Dove shampoo sells to you, right? That is a B2C environment because a business, Hindustan Unilever, is selling the Dove shampoo to its direct customer. What is B two B? Now B two B is where a business is helping another business to satisfy its customers. Now, what does this mean? Is if it's an agency, now imagine a digital agency or a social agency. The agency helps the brand, which is Kota, right, to go and service our or to go and com you know communicate to our customers. The same way now Hindustan Unilever, and if we take the same example of Dove. Hindustan Unilever will have an agency. The agency will help Hindustan Unilever do marketing. Will create the videos. Will create TV ads. All of these things, which Hindustan Unilever will then go and show its end customers, right? So the agency here is the B two B because the agency is dealing with the company, with the brand, and the brand is then dealing with the customer. Now the type of emails that go to your customer and the type of emails that go to your business client or business partner is different, right? There are some things which are similar, but the messaging is very, very different. So we'll just go through, and most of these slides are examples only, which is a good thing. So in B two C, we already went through the three types, right? Promotional, transactional, traditional. All of you are clear with that. So now we'll move on to the B two B part of it. Now in B two B. Because there are multiple stages. See, people go to someone, right, and to sell something 
for their clients right so i will go and i will tell someone that listen i have a product which will help you do this so imagine a mailchimp right and most of you all may know mailchimp mailchimp is an email sending software mailchimp will come to me and say pooja we will help you send out email campaigns to your customers right so they are approaching me now when mailchimp has to send me emails this is what b2b is when mailchimp is sending pooja an email basis the fact that she works in kota is the b2b thing it's not about the business is not sending because business are eventually people right so the business itself of mailchimp is sending to an individual here in this company who will make a decision so what different types of emails you will have is there is a lead nurturing email now what is a lead nurturing email uh Pooja needs information about what are the latest trends in the email industry. Pooja needs more information about what's happening in the digital industry. So what these guys will do is Mailchimp and these agencies. They will keep sending me weekly mail saying, Pooja, this is the newest campaign that's available. This is a new thing that Facebook has launched. This is a new thing that uh, Mailchimp has launched. They'll keep sending me these information, industry-related information, anything that can help me. you know get more information right these are called lead nurturing i am the lead i am their lead because i am making a decision whether to go ahead with mailchimp or not so they are nurturing me to make sure that eventually when i have to make a decision i buy from their product the second one is when i buy their product i will get a welcome mail right welcome to mailchimp now you can send out the best emails with easiest efficiency etc etc that's a welcome email post sale and onboarding is how to use it Now, once they purchase Mailchimp, they'll come back and they will say, "Listen, if you want to use Mailchimp, you have to, you know, go and they'll show give me maybe a demo video, right? And they will say, 'This is where you have to click. This is where you have to open. This is where you can go and upload your database.' This is this is important because a lot of times B two B is complicated. We don't, you know, like B two C are easy, right? If you tell me how to use the shampoo, I know how to use the shampoo." but b2b are more complicated tasks you know things that you have to do so onboarding emails very important promotional is the same right so mailchimp comes with a new product they send me a email saying mailchimp has launched this surveys you know you've been using mailchimp for the past one year how has your experience been newsletters are all different things that mailchimp has done in the past one month cross sell is where if i'm using one specific service of mailchimp they'll come and they will say that now you can also use this at 20% discount something like that so these are the different types of email options available in b2b so b2c if you break up these three right they come into all of these different emails so you have and i have examples so you know time flies when you look great it's been a year right you first shopped a year ago to celebrate here's a cool 10% off the you we missed to email the right one is product promotion plus offer the left one is an order confirmation email that we usually see right is a cart abandonment email or which is this is still in your cart then we have an apology email or you know we are sorry our site was now get a free get free shipping across our, all our products then you have festive promotion email or. so all of these are type of emailers that come and we saw this in traditional right all of these are b2c emailers fun emailers with call to action all of those things now b2b emailers there are a lot of different options okay so we discussed a few of this initially this is just a break up of them so you can also have you know summarizing your year with mailchimp we can send out invites saying there's a new webinar that we are holding for the future of email marketing we can ask them for you know ask people for referrals we can tell them we'll give you a free subscription for a year of mailchimp if you give us a referral uh send you know wishes on birthdays anniversaries all of these things right so in b2b and like i said don't think of this thing we are talking to a business see eventually you are talking to me right or you are talking to the head of admin you are talking to the head of hr or you are talking to the ceo you are talking to a person at the other end even though a business is talking they are talking to a person at the other end so you can feel free to send happy diwali you know festive we launch this happy to have you on board all of those kind of emailers can go out but remember you are talking in that email to the person this is not like get 20% off at the with dove shampoo right this is saying you know you have been a, a privileged customer with us for the past one year let us offer you a 20% off on subscription so the communication itself becomes different now because b2b and because we are solving a problem for a customer now how are we solving a problem 
because the agency for example right they are helping me do my campaigns better mailchimp is helping me send emails and track them better all b2b offerings in this entire world whichever industry you go to will always be about helping a person in a professional job so that whatever they do can become easier right or can become better so there's always a pain point that you're trying to resolve so just giving a few examples right what you see on the left side is a printer literally it's a printer which says that we help you put your brand to spotlight so if this email goes to my brand marketing team my brand marketing team will say oh with this brand i will now be able to create better leaflets better uh, you know postcards better emails uh, you know all of those right so i can create better things for product life as a brand to send my customers so you are helping so this brand is helping product life solve the problem of printing for them now asana and it's a very famous project management tool right for task list asana is saying that we will help you complete your things to do because a lot of people have issues with being able to close their tasks for the day right they are saying that we will help you close your task we'll help you manage your task better now that's what the tool is saying so they are coming to pooja and saying we are helping you solve your time management project management issues now this on the left is where we are helping you increase your knowledge because it's a webinar right so allow us to solve the industry wide challenge of you know information attend this webinar and you will get more information the right one is where you are providing like i was saying about mailchimp you are providing email marketing sms marketing services so we are helping you provide we are giving you the tools that you need to reach your customers right so all the tools you need and maybe a few you didn't know you needed be everywhere where your customers are this is also solving a need of a person so b2b like i said is just about how you are helping the person or the brand you know resolve something resolve an issue or to do it better that's it there's some quick statistics out of all of this and email is the cheapest okay so emails so i'll i'll give you an approximate cost of how much this you know cost comes to so sms has come to 13 and a half paise okay and emails come to 40 paise per email sent now though this seems like a very small number all of us have huge customer databases right you will have like 10 lakh Uh, or you know 10 million databases and all as big businesses we have that kind of database so if you consider that it's actually a expensive proposition because you are doing a 40 paise into a 10 million right so it is not very cheap but honestly it is the cheapest of all the digital platforms that you have so you will be able to always an entire concept of roi is return on investment if i spend 80000 rupees today to send out emailers to say 5 million people eventually even if i get 50 of them to purchase i will be able to make my 80000 back right so the highest return on investment is always from email marketing so what this numbers are by the way is for every 100 rupees you spend you get 73 rupees back this is how you read this data for email marketing for every 100 rupees you spend on seo you get 67 rupees back so email is the actually the closest in terms of being able to give roi the other thing to remember is if you have personalization right and personalization is not only names name is obviously one of it which you can see on the right hand side that if i send you saying you know pooja you can now shop better with this card right if i say that there is a 3% increase that you can get in open rates in how many people open the email however the entire concept is if you personalize the email itself you will get a 20 rupees return on investment for every 1 rupee you put and this is because if i have gone to a website and if i have gone to the bed sheet section right if i get an email which says hey we know you are looking for a bed sheet these are the different options we have see if you like any of them and we'll give you a 10% off right my chances of clicking on that email is much more like i said usually the spam emails happen i'm not even looking for buying an iphone and it's showing me an iphone but these if i can personalize and say this is what you were searching for this is what you we are offering you it always will work as a better medium and this like i said is the entire thing about what do you test what should you test 
if you test subject line you will get a increase in open rates if you test the body copy messaging as body copy you will get an increase in click rate other things also you can and you know we we found this very weird thing by the way that when we used to have an option which is explore now or no more we had a higher click through rate than we had on buy now or buy online so now and this is only because we experimented and we figured that there was a difference right but also experiment on call to actions experiment on the design templates experiment on should i personalize name should i personalize location what should i personalize you know experiment with the landing page audience segments sender name all of these things so all of this you can experiment with the ones that usually yield the most result is subject line and message and i think this is the last slide yes so in open rates right but all different businesses have different open rates now there are certain businesses right and what you can see on the right hand side is transactional which means that emails are go saying this is your otp now otp honestly is you know a lot more you will otp you will get at least 90% open rate but anything which is i forgot my password or you've just logged in and all or verify your email all of that have around 52% of open rate if you send out other emails like traditional email promotional email and all the open rate varies between 11% to 20% okay now here it's written average 20% but that's for some industries like a mintra and all of these guys will get average 20% but if you look at bfsi retail a lot of these brands they will only get between 11 to 20% usually the figure is 14% which is an average that we see but for some of them like i said zomato and all easily will get 20 25% average open rate okay so our point is to be able to send these things track which ones work the best track which ones work the best with open click and purchase which is sales and then send more of those emails restricting to three emails only but stick to those kind of emails if you're sending out something like we you know for a year we sent out happy birthday emailers we got one person who opened it so we sent this to lakhs of our customers right one person opened that email so if you're figuring out that these emails are not being opened and respected now don't waste the time of the designer team and all to make these emailers because no one's opening them right so evaluate whether they're working or not and only continue sending those emailers which will work and we are done guys any questions